Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the RSA convention in downtown San Francisco. 40,000 people talking security, trying to keep you safe, keep your car safe, your nest safe, <laughs> microwave safe, refrigerator safe. Everything safe. Oh my gosh. Jason Porter, VP Security Solutions from AT&T. Welcome. Very good. Thanks for having me, Jeff. So what are your impressions of the show? This is a crazy event. Oh, it is crazy. I mean, look at all the people. It's the crowds. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, the best part is just walk in the hallways, uh, getting to connect with friends and network and really uh, create new solutions to help our customers. It seems to be a recurring theme. Everybody sees everybody who's involved in this space is here today. Oh, absolutely, yeah. For the next couple of days, it's just uh, all in all the time. So AT&T, obviously big network. You guys are carrying all this crazy IP traffic that's got good stuff and bad stuff. A lot of fast moving parts, absolutely. ton more data flying through the system. What's kind of your, your kind of step back view of what's going on and, and how are you guys addressing new challenges with 5G and IoT and an ever increasing amount of data flow through the yeah, network? Absolutely, so you're right, at AT&T we see a ton of traffic. We see 130 petabytes of traffic every day across our network. So our threat platform, we pull in five billion uh, threat events every 10 minutes. So Wait, one more time, five, five billion, billion with a B. Five billion events every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes. So, that's what our big data platform is analyzing with our uh, data scientists and our math. So lots of uh, volume and activity going on. We have 200 million endpoints all feeding that, uh, that threat platform as well. So what are we seeing? We're seeing threats continuing to grow, obviously. Everybody here at this show knows it. Uh, but give you some concrete examples. We've seen a 4,000% increase in IOT vulnerability scanning. So IOT is something, as a community, as a group here, we definitely need to go solve. And, uh, and that's why we launched our IOT Security Alliance uh, last week. We formed an alliance with some big names out there like Palo Alto Networks and IBM and Trustonic and, and others that really we all have a passion in going out and solving uh, IOT security. It's the number one barrier to con or concern for adopting IoT. Okay, so you touched on all kinds A of whole stuff ton there. Of stuff, sorry. Okay, so let's go to the big data. So yeah. what's interesting about big data, and I always tell my kids, right, every coin has two sides. Absolutely. The bad part is you've got that much more data to sort through, but the good news is you can use a lot of those same tools. Obviously, it's not a guy sitting with a pager waiting for a red light to go off. That's right. Analyzing that. So how has the big data tools helped you guys to be able to see the threats faster, to react to them faster, and really yeah. get more proactive? Yeah, that's a great point. So cybersecurity is a 0% unemployment field, right? <laughs> uh, people, you can't get enough people to come work in cybersecurity who have the right talent. So we had to really evolve. Uh, a few years ago, we had to make a big shift that we were not going to just put platforms and people watching screens looking for blinking red lights, right? So we made this shift to a big data threat platform that's basically doing the work of identifying the threats uh, without the people. So we're able to analyze at machine speed instead of people speed, which allows us to as I said, get through many more events right. much more quickly and allows us to eliminate false positives and keep our people working really at that, looking at those new threats, those things that we want the people analyzing. Right, okay, so then the next thing you talked about is IOT. Yep. And my favorite part of IOT is autonomous vehicles just because I live in Palo Alto, Absolutely. we see the Google cars all <laughs> along, and they're coming soon, right? Absolutely. But now you're talking about moving in a 3,000 pound vehicle, yeah. potentially somebody takes control, so security is so important for IOT. The good news for you guys, 5G is going to be a big part of it, not necessarily Absolutely. just for security, but enablement. So you guys are right in the heart of IoT. Yeah, we are. You know, we have uh, one of the largest IoT deployments in the world. We have the most connected devices, and so uh, what we see is really a, a need for a layered approach to security. You mentioned 5G. 5G is certainly a part of getting capacity to that, but when you move to IoT with uh, connected cars and things, you move beyond data harm to physical harm for for people and so we've got to be able to you know up our game and so a layered approach securing that device uh, putting malware detection but even threat and, and monitoring what's going on between the hardware and the operating system and the user and then segmenting say in a car 
telematics from infotainment, right? You want to really segment uh, the telematics so that the controls of driving and stopping that car are separate from the infotainment, the uh, the internet traffic, the video watching right. Spotify from my kid. or whatever. Yeah, right, absolutely. right, right. Absolutely. And so we do that through SMS, private SMS user groups, private APNs, VPNs, those kinds of things. And then, of course, you want to build that castle around your data, your your control unit that's managing that car. Make sure you do full uh, UTM, you know, threat capabilities. Throw everything you can at that. We've even got some specialized solutions that we built some, with some three-letter agencies to really monitor that uh, that control point. Right. Well, then the last thing you touched on is really partnership okay. uh, and coopetition yep. and sharing, which is which has to be done at a scale that it wasn't before absolutely. to keep up with the bad guys because apparently they're sharing all their stuff amongst each other all yeah, the time. Absolutely. And here we are, forty thousand people. It's an ecosystem. <laughs> so, so how is that evolving in terms of? kind of the way that you share data that maybe you wouldn't have wanted to share before for the benefit of the whole. Yeah, so that our threat platform, we built it with that in mind, with sharing. So it's all it's surrounded by an API layer so that we can actually uh, extract data for our customers. Our customers can give us their data. You know, it's interesting. I thought they would want to pull data, but uh, our biggest customers said, no, you know what? We want your data scientists and your math looking at our environment too, so they wanted to push data. But, you know, speaking about alliances overall, you know, it's got to be a community, as you said, and our IoT Security Alliance is a great example of that. We've got some big, uh, you know, suppliers in there like Palo Alto, but we also have IBM. IBM and AT&T are two of the largest managed security companies in the planet, so you would think competition but we came together in this situation because we feel like IoT is one of those things we've got to get right as a right, community. Right, right. All right, Jason, I'll give you the last word. It's 2017, okay. we're just getting started. What are kind of your priorities for this year? What will we be talking about a year from now at RSA 2018? Well, you're going to continue to hear more about uh, attack types, different attack types, the expanding threat surface of IoT, but I think you're going to continue to hear more about our critical infrastructure being targeted. You saw with the Dyne attack, you're starting to take out uh, major pieces of that are impacting uh, people's lives. And so think about power grids and uh, moving into some more critical infrastructure. I think that's going to be more and more the flavor of the day as you continue to progress through the year. All right, well hopefully you uh, you get a good night's sleep, but we want you working hard. We're Absolutely. all rooting for you. We're all working hard. All right, he's Jason Porter from at and I'm Jeff Frick with theCUBE. You're watching theCUBE from RSA Conference San Francisco. Thanks for watching.